Good day, I'm Brian Farrell and welcome to Pace IT's session on Authentication and Authorization Basics Part 2. Today we're going to begin by covering some authentication concepts and then we will conclude with a brief discussion on some authorization concepts. We do have a fair amount of information to go over. Not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with a discussion on some authentication concepts. A common method of authentication involves creating a hashed value of the information. Hashing is a cryptographic process that uses an algorithm to derive a set value, that's the hashed value, from data and a secret key. The hash can be used to verify that the data is coming from where it is supposed to and that it has not been intercepted or changed in transit, thus providing both authentication and an integrity check at the same time. The most popular hashing algorithms are MD5, that's Message Digest Algorithm 5, and SHA-1, that's Secure Hash Algorithm 1. Of those two hashing algorithms, SHA-1 is the more secure, and if security is your main concern, it's the one that should be used. Some additional authentication concepts include HMAC, that's Hash-Based Message Authentication Code. This is where a secret key is combined with an algorithm to create the message authentication code, or MAC. The MAC is actually the resulting hashed value. It's the end result. Then there is the hash-based one-time password, or HOTP. It is an HMAC-based algorithm that is used to create the password that is used for authentication purposes. HOTP is often used by authentication servers. Then there's TOTP. That's time-based one-time password. It's an authentication process for creating passwords based on the current time. An algorithm is combined with a secret key and the current time to generate a one-time password. It is a type of HOTP. TOTP is commonly used with security tokens that are used for two-factor authentication. PAP, or Password Authentication Protocol, is a basic form of authentication. When logging into a network resource, the user or device is required to supply a username and password. The username and password are sent in clear text format, so this method is considered unsecure and should only be used as a last resort. More secure than PAP is CHAP, that's Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. When logging into a network resource, the user or device is challenged to supply a user and secret password, and it authenticates through a three-way handshake process. The resource issues a challenge. What is the hashed value of the username and secret password? So what is the HMAC? The user's device sends the hashed value to the resource device. The resource evaluates the hashed value against a database and either accepts or rejects the connection. Then there is the token. Tokens utilize a time-based one-time password to authenticate users via two-factor authentication. The TOTP is usually generated every 30 to 60 seconds. The token may be hardware-based, as in it's attached to a key fob, or the token may be software-based, as in it's supplied by an app on a smartphone. Then there are smart cards. Smart cards can also be used for authentication. They utilize a card, usually credit card size, that has an embedded circuit and a personal identification number or PIN number is used, and smart cards also provide two-factor authentication. Then there is the Common Access Card, or CAC. It's a type of smart card issued by the U.S. military that is used for identification and authentication purposes. It is used to authenticate users on military networks. It is also used to encrypt and digitally sign electronic messages. Now let's move on to authorization concepts. 
The first authorization concept we're going to cover is separation of duties. This is the process of taking a critical organizational task and separating it into smaller jobs. No one person is allowed or authorized to perform all of the duties that make up the task, thus reducing the risk that can arise from a malicious employee. Then there is principle of least privilege. This is only granting the minimum amount of rights and privileges or authorization that are required for employees to perform their jobs. This also reduces the risk associated with either malicious employees or a compromised user account. Then there are time of day restrictions. This is establishing technological controls that limit what actions may be taken based on time as in preventing employees from logging on to the network outside of operating hours. Rule-based access control, or RBAC, may be used by authorization systems. Rule-based access control is the creation of rules within a system that either allow or disallow authorization to perform actions based on the rule. The ACL, or access control list, tends to be a type of rule-based access control and it is used for authorization purposes. Typically, it comes in the form of a list of rules. The list is typically examined from top to bottom. Once a rule is matched, the corresponding action is taken. If no rule is matched, the typical response is to deny authorization. Then there is role-based access control, which unfortunately is also called RBAC. It's a process of creating authorization levels based on the role, as in user group, that a person fulfills within an organization. Different roles will have different authorization levels, allowing the people who fill those roles to perform different duties. It is most often implemented using the principle of least privilege. Then there is discretionary access control, or DAC. It's a technological control that is used to determine authorization to resources based on a specific list. The list is called the Discretionary Access Control List, or DACL. The DACL is a listing of users and groups that are granted access, or authorization, to resources. The DACL will also determine the amount of access, or what actions can be taken based on permissions, that the user or groups has to that specific resource. And finally, we have the mandatory access control concept or the MAC concept. It's an access control model in which each individual, which are known as subjects, are assigned to a clearance level, as in top secret or confidential. Authorization resources is based on the resources classification, as in is that resource top secret or confidential. The subject is usually granted automatic authorization for resources that are at or fall below their clearance level. As in, a top secret clearance will always be able to access resources classified as secret. That concludes this session on Authentication and Authorization Basics Part 2. We began with some authentication concepts and then we concluded with a brief discussion on authorization concepts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.